G'day, I'm Ash, I hope you're all doing fantastically well. Welcome back to SnowRunner, it's been a little while since we've covered this game on the channel. That being said, let's jump straight into it today. Uh, we're wait awaiting the new DLC to come out, and I haven't really touched Russia at all. I uh, played the Living Daylights out of the, uh, the, the previous two maps, and I haven't really touched Russia at all. So we've got a couple of trucks kitted out, there are a couple of other trucks on, uh, on the map currently, as I've done certain missions. But I will say... These Azovs uh, are fantastic vehicles, slow uh, but powerful. That's really what, the, what they're designed for. Now, for the first time I'm playing the game without uh, a controller. So usually I'd play a game like this with a controller and that's probably the best way to do so. So it's going to be a little interesting that now that I've got the uh, basic controls of you know a regular keyboard and mouse because, well, I'm kind of missing the controller already. Um, I don't even I don't even remember how to get into cockpit. This is uh it's kind of interesting. Anyway, it's early morning and we've got to go pick up some oil barrels. We're gonna go do that right now. Hopefully. Hopefully nothing too atrocious happens along the way. Now I have customized and kitted out this vehicle for uh, the off-roading. Now usually I have an orange truck, but uh, for some reason I've gone with colour-coded different trucks, that's why I remember which one is which. All right, we need to deliver four oil, uh, and just in case, what we will do is we will pick up a couple more. Two, three, four, and we'll bring a fifth one just because the extra weight will help us in the long run. Now, the last SnowRunners video I did, I believe, was covering all the truck horns, although that's about to be outdated, I believe turn left here, watch out for the mud oh that trailer's tipping a bit much but again this game is fantastically beautiful and I really love this game I did miss it actually because trucking is fantastic ok that's going to be a little bit steep so we'll... that bank angle though So again, I'm trying to shift down as much as I possibly can to keep the momentum going because the, the automatic gearbox will just automatically change gears when it likes to. I want to keep that momentum going because there's nothing worse than having to stop completely. Now I do have a new keyboard so I do apologise if you're hearing clickety clack 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 in the background. But hey, that's just what happens. Alright, let's enjoy some trucking. That steep rise we go. Now, I've never done off-roading with a truck. That'd be something that I really, really want to do. In 2017, I was out full driving with some friends, and this is a fantastic sort of experience, but... Oh, hang on. Just got to make sure that we don't catch on anything. Trailer's bottomed out here. Right, come on. Easy does it. Fantastic. Okay, we've got several options and I'm, I think I'm going the right way oh crap come on ease on the brakes ease on the brakes we'll get into the story in a second a river crossing bit of a hollow in front of the tires there this is why the sideboard is definitely preferable because if your load falls off the back that's a bad thing all right down into the mud pull up there we are fantastic so this thing just goes and goes and goes. Yeah, sure, it does guzzle a bit of fuel. But it's one of those machines that just does not keep, uh, I don't know, does not keep you in one place forever. But yes, as I was saying, in 2017 I went full driving with some friends. And uh, we took a convoy of four cars with us. Uh, and everyone uh, there, we had, there was eight of us in total. And during this time period, we recorded some funny moments and videos and stuff and things and many of those videos I have unreleased on on this very channel and uh, all, all of the vehicle owners were manual drivers now yeah. and a part of that was just due to the fact that when I got my license most of my family and most of my immediate family had essentially sold off all their manual cars and my granddad was a big collector of off-road vehicles he had a uh, oh crap that angle though see this thing tr struggling and sliding down that hill yeah, this is what you call extreme 
I guess these trucks are built for it, so, you know, there's that. Because all the passengers at the time had automatic licenses. Now, I haven't caught up with that group of people uh, for a while since that particular thing, but what ended up by happening is we're off-roading, we're up in the Blue Mountains in Sydney, and we're, we're basically you know, a few hundred kilometres from the middle of nowhere, and we're on the other side of the mountains where it's basically fuck all. You know, we're in that sort of middle territory between Victoria, Canberra, and obviously uh, New South Wales. Right. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Um, hmm. well, it's thrown a spanner in the works, hasn't it? Now, yeah. can we just drive forward? Okay, let's uh, let's attach the winch again. No, I didn't say crane. Actually, that's worked in our favour. We can uh, actually use the crane to push us. Is that, is that going to help? Use that one and attach to there. Like so. Come on. Problem solving with Ash. There you go. Look at that. We're now upright. We're now in our correct position. Plus, we've only lost one cargo and I'm not going to bother to... To, uh... <laughs> okay. Let's release the winch. Carefully, careful. Right, beautiful. Okay, let's repack our car cargo. That's what we want to do. Come on. Right, beautiful. And we're going to restore our crane. Look at that. Fantastic. Anyway, I was the only one who had manual driving experience, although at the time I didn't have a manual uh, car or, you know, manual license. It's quite interesting, because as the story goes... Now, my friends and I are off-roading. <laughs> the story's going to be about 50 minutes long at this rate. We keep getting interrupted. Where do we have to go? We have to go left here, didn't we? Uh, and me and my friends are going off-roading. We're going camping, etc, etc. It's a great time. No joke. Uh, we're crossing up the Blue Mountains. We're going up these rocky terrains and sort of these muddy tracks like we are here in, in uh, Russia right now, except uh, a little drier during the Australian summer. Having a great old time having campfires and so on and so forth. Anyway, about three days into the trip, doing a bunch of off-road stuff, and one of the cars, so the, the, the... One of the cars actually... Ooh, no, no, no. Oh, Nelly. Nelly tipped it. One of the cars nearly uh, flipped over, so it was quite interesting. But that's not where the story ends. The guy with the 60 Series Land Cruiser was doing a bit of off-road stuff, and those things are fairly you know, robust. You know, his vehicle was fairly stock, you know. He hadn't really done much modifications to it other than added a snorkel. You know, he'd repainted it and was getting mud tires for it eventually, etc, etc. But suffice to say, that when we reached a really deep pit of mud in one of the sections, all the other cars had no problem. But because he was carrying extra gear, and obviously I was, uh, you know, shotgun, I was passenger with him, uh, I had to get out and push the vehicle when it got stuck. It got to the point where the Hontai convoy was helping pushing this vehicle out, and we, we'd done several beautiful, uh, like, off-road trips, and the scenery was absolutely superb. But this one sort of muddy hole at the the bottom, at the start of a sort of a track that was going towards our final campsite at about 4pm in the afternoon, was completely overshadowed by the fact that we got that 60 series Land Cruiser completely stuck. Now keep in mind, most of us are, you know, 19, 20 year old. <laughs> we had one guy who was 21, but aside from that, everyone else was pretty like, chillax I suppose. So we're, what do we do? Okay, well we're going to get the vehicle unstuck. Everyone's pushing, we're putting mad tracks down and, and max tracks and things to, to get extra grip for the vehicle. We're, we're trying to push the mud out from around the tyres, that way we can actually get some form of traction. It's a bit like this situation right here, we're sort of in a bit of a sticky situation. Anyway, uh, the driver then decides to get out and, and gives the car over to one of the other manual drivers. Ends up by happening, right? As we climb this hill here. Come on. There we are. Beautiful. Ain't no mountain high enough. 
But everyone's out pushing this vehicle. And the owner of the vehicle is now pushing his own vehicle out. Now usually, if your vehicle is stuck, everyone else helps and pushes. While the, you know, the person riding shotgun, in case me, gets out to push. Well, I was already helping out, uh, digging, digging, you know, drainage lines and all sorts of things to try and get this vehicle unstuck. The end result ended up being that the, the owner of the vehicle got trapped under his own car uh, and broke his leg in several places. Now, I have told this story on livestream before, and I have told this story in an interview before. But this poor bloke, you know, we had four manual drivers, we had four uh, manual cars. We were about 30 kilometers from the nearest access point or the nearest, like, sort of decent gravel road in order to get us back to civilization. So the guy breaks his leg, we're doing first aid on him and everything like that, telling him to keep it still. Now, this is very harsh, rocky terrain, mixed with a lot of muds, river crossings, and, you know, the day was filled with stuff. Uh, so instead we did the more, more ridiculous thing, we drove 30 kilometers to the nearest gravel road where an ambulance or a, uh, or a, you know, the nearest clearing where they could actually direct us towards a, uh, air ambulance. And so, the, the other guys had brought their girlfriends along and so on and so forth, there was, again, there was eight of us. The, the poor bloke, who had his, had his, had his leg run over, <laughs> who I was camping with, um, yeah, no, I, I had to drive that car. Uh, back 30 kilometers. Okay, we're gonna have to figure out a way of getting through here. Let's back up a bit. So, I ended up by having to drive a car 30 kilometers through the bush, manual, and I hadn't driven stick in a few years prior to that. I, I, saw, I did a little bit of learning on manual, but, you know, occasionally I'd uh, end up on a, you know, up on my family farm driving, you know, manual vehicles so it it is second nature to me but something that i have to get used to again like all things it's just in life you know it's a learning process once you have it you probably have it but you know it's a matter of getting back into you know driving stick again i mean at the moment where i live there's no need for for stick considering that it's basically a, a suburban area with a lot of highway and a lot of uh, a lot of interesting infrastructure but i'm on the fringes of uh, society this, this game just looks fantastic. Did I ever mention that? Alright. Here we go. We're going to take the high road. We're going to deliver the oil barrels to the factory, and then we're going to head towards the farm. So we're going over rough terrain and, and stuff and things. We've got him in the passenger seat, uh, in, in the back of a vehicle with one of the members of the car. So we're now driving, you know, spotting for one person. and It, it, was, a, it was an annoying trip because... Your your second person in, in, in the in passenger seat generally is the person that you use in order to actually uh, you know spot vehicles or do you know vehicle damage assessment or so on and so forth. They sort of end up by being that that go to person that while your driver they're also like the assistant lookout scout kind of person. If that makes any sense. So we already had one vehicle down. Uh, <laughs> And, oh, the, the, the trip just got completely derailed. We had to drive 30 kilometers in the dark. Well, it was getting dark. It was approaching about 5 p.m. Man, I'll never forget that. My, my best mate screaming on the back seat of, the, uh, of his own car while uh, one of the girls is trying to get, calm him down and make sure that he's all right. Man, every bump. That poor bloke broke his leg. His leg slipped underneath the wheel of a car. Can you imagine that? I certainly can't. It was horrible. And I haven't been off-roading properly since about then. Uh, but there was another incident that overshadowed everything for that, and that's probably something that I will not touch on. But there you go, there's my horrible off-road story. And we've just delivered to the factory. We've only got one parcel left, let's just say one bundle of oil barrels. I'm going to go deliver this to the farm. Hopefully, oh, take a little bit of damage there. Come on, just plow through. It's one of the things I don't like this vehicle for. A lot of the Russian vehicles, they don't have a lot of ground clearance. Alright, climbing this top of this hill here. I'm trying to get up and around this bend. And up onto the, towards those rocks out there, but just look at the view. Utterly spectacular. Right, the terrain is utterly treacherous as well, but hey, there's a downed car in the middle there. 
This thing does turn like a bus, though. You, you will have to give it that. It, it's quite a long wheelbase. To get up through here is going to be a challenge that I'm willing to accept. Uh, provided we can actually get up the hill, that is. Alright, now that we've got up the hill, we can just slowly let her coast back. Again, this is very, very sort of annoying treacherous terrain. No, I might give up on going that direction. I might just go down around the rocks here. It looks safer, so I'm going to do it. Probably a better option, to be honest. Yeah, I think that was a better option. Having to try and fit that trailer around that top bend there would have been an absolute nightmare. Right, we're on the home stretch now. In fact, where we have to deliver our boxes is just in here, in this farmland. So let's go ahead and get that delivered. Underneath the gate there. I'm surprised the truck actually fits underneath it. Wonder what this place would have been. Or still is, I should say. Looks like the most run-down farm there possibly could be. I guess when your uh, primal instinct is just to make uh, decent ends and a decent living, then you probably don't focus on those kind of things. You know this kind of area of the world is probably very, very remote. Um, to me, that is. I believe it's east of Siberia, so... You know, we're in an area where the only pla you know, the only things that would probably come in is either a cargo plane or, or an occasional train. Alright. Cargo management. Let's unload. That's job complete. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. My name is Ash. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.